What is going on guys, welcome back. In today's video, we're going to learn how to containerize Python applications using Docker, which is a key skill in the industry. So let us get right into it. All right, so for this video, you will obviously have to install Docker on your system. Maybe you already have it, maybe not. If you don't have it, you just have to go to docker.com slash get docker or docs.docker.com slash docker. You will find a link in the description down below. Here you can choose your operating system, in my case, Windows, and you can just follow the installation process. It's quite simple. You download Docker desktop, for example. Uh, you will need to have the uh, Windows subsystem for Linux to backend or the Hyper-V backend. So one of the two virtualization features or environments. Uh, I have a video on the Windows subsystem for Linux already. So if you want to know how to install it, you can watch that video. Otherwise, you can also just follow the installation guide here on docker.com. But you will need to have Docker installed. This is basically the containerization environment, you could say. Um, and the basic idea of using Docker or containerization in general is to package and deploy uh, applications in containers and making everything more uh, consistent and reproducible. So if you have a container, this container will just run, it will just run, it's a virtualized environment, you could say, and it will just run without um, you worrying about the compatibility with your system, you can package and run applications uh, in those containers. Uh, and this overall improves efficiency and scalability. So it just makes sense if you have something that you want to be able to run everywhere, you can just ship it in a container. And if the environment supports running containers, you can just run it everywhere. That's the basic idea of using Docker of using containerization. All right, so once we have Docker installed, we can go to the development environment of our choice, in my case, PyCharm, and we can write a simple Python script that we then want to containerize that we then want to Dockerize. Uh, and in this case, I'm going to do two different uh, containers, I'm going to do two different applications that we're going to containerize. The first one is going to be a simple Python script that runs a socket, so a server, you could say, and if you connect to that socket, it will give you some information. And this information will be uh, taken from a third party module so that we have some dependencies here. Um, so this is not necessarily a useful script. This is just something that works. And I'm going to show you how it works in a container. The basic idea is we're going to have a server socket. And if you connect to that server socket, you're going to get uh, one feature, some data from a data set that is loaded from scikit-learn. And the only reason we do that is so that we have a dependency on scikit-learn so that we can see how to install something automatically in the container. Because otherwise, we would be just working with core Python modules socket and something else maybe. So we're going to start by importing the core Python module time, we're going to import also the core Python module socket. And we're going to import, we're actually not import, we're going to say from sklearn dot data set, data sets, we're going to import load iris. So if you don't have scikit-learn installed, you can just open up your command line, you can type pip install scikit learn like this, and then you will be able to do this import as well. But the good thing is when you ship a container, you don't even have to have it installed on your system. So I can actually once I have the container, uninstall scikit-learn so that I don't have this Python library on my system anymore. But in the container, it will still know and have scikit-learn. So I can still run the features of scikit-learn, even though it's not installed on my system, because it's running in a container. That's the benefit of this. And the basic idea is to say data equals load iris to then say server equals socket, 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 internet socket, so AF inet, socket, TCP socket, so sock stream, and then server dot bind. Now, this is here important, we need to bind it uh, on a special interface here on a special host here, which is the zero in string, of course, uh, in, in quotation marks, of course, 0, 0.0.0.0. 0 .0 .0. So we're not hosting this on localhost, we're hosting this on this IP address, which is important for the Docker container. Uh, and we provide a port, for example, four times nine. So this basically means the server is now listening on this host on this port. And now we can say server dot listen to actually start the listening. And all we're going to do is we're going to say while true um, client and address is going to be equal to server dot accept. So we're going to accept all the time incoming connections, then we're going to print connection from and we're going to say that the address just connected, then we're going to say client sent. And we're going to send something to the client like you are connected. 
and then we can also add a backslash n because um, on the other side, in this case, for the demonstration, I'm not going to write another Python script, I'm going to run a uh, telnet client and because of that we're not going to use the print function so it's not automatically going to do line breaks which is why I'm going to send them right away so I'm going to send your connected line break and then this needs to be encoded again the specifics of what we're coding here is not too are not too important because the focus is not on this script we're actually building the focus is more on the containerization and we're building the script to have something that is listening on a host and that is using third party packages. That's the basic idea. You can also feel free to use another example if you want to. So client sent and what we're also going to send here now is we're going to send uh, the first column of the iris data set. So we're going to say data, of course, in uh, curly brackets, we're going to say data, and then we have the key data. And here we have everything from the first column. So the column with index zero, um, and then we're also going to add a backslash and we're going to encode this. Um, and then we can do something like time sleep, two seconds or something and then client sent. You are being disconnected or something like that. And of course, this needs to be encoded as well because we can only send bytes via sockets. And then we're going to close the connection with a client and we're going to listen for new connection. So we're going to accept the next connection. Uh, this is an endless loop. So that is the script, we can actually run this now without a Docker container. So it's just listening, we can then use a telnet client. Now on Windows, if you're using the telnet client, or if you want to use the telnet client, this is a deprecated feature, an insecure feature, you could also say, so it's disabled by default. If you want to do this for just debugging or demonstration purposes, or just uh, playing around with it, uh, you can go to features. So turn Windows features on or off. And you can scroll down here to the telnet client and check it. And then you will be able to use telnet in the command line. On Linux, it's simpler. If you're doing this on Linux, you can just use netcat. So NC to connect to that um, host and port. And um, we're going to just open up the command line now. And we're going to say telnet. Now I'm not sure if this already works with the host we provided. But let's see if I connect to localhost port 9999. There you go, you are connected, we get the data. Again, doesn't matter what the format is, we're just getting some data here. Um, and that is basically it. So this is how this works. And we want to now take this and reproduce the functionality in a Docker container. So we want to have a container that we can just ship to someone. This person might not have scikit-learn installed. Um, they will still be able to get the data from scikit-learn because in the container, we will have all the dependencies and everything we need. And this is done with Docker and with a so called Docker file. So what we do now is we create a new file. And we call this file Docker file with a capital D. And you can see already in PyCharm, we get this icon, this Docker icon. Um, and what we're going to provide here for this uh, script is quite simple. We're going to say from and here we need to provide the Python version. So it's going to be Python in my case 3.9. This is the version I'm using. You can of course also uh, provide Python 3.10 3.11 or some uh, stuff like slim or certain snapshots from previous or something. But I'm just going to go with a classic 3.9. And then we're going to say we want to add some files. And the only file that we want to add here is the main.py file. And we're going to add it to dot so to the current directory. And then we're going to just run a command. And this command is going to be pip install scikit learn. So this is why I wanted to use a third party package because if you don't use a third party package, there's no need to run pip install. But by specifying this by specifying run pip install scikit learn, this is going to run this installation command when creating the Docker container and in the Docker container, we will then have scikit learn. That's the basic idea. And then the last thing quite simple is we're going to execute the command and the command is going to be Python. And then the second keyword is going to be dot slash main dot py. So we added main dot py to the current directory. And here we're just running it. That's the basic idea. Um, and in order to now build this container, we need to have Docker installed, as I already mentioned, we need to have Docker running as well. So if you have Docker installed, you should have this Docker desktop app, you want to run it. And once this is running, you're, uh, you have the Docker daemon running. So Docker is running in the background, so you can use it. And all you need to do now is you need to open the terminal or the command line. Um, we're going to navigate to the current directory here. 
And in the current directory, I hope you can see this well enough. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. In the current directory, we're now going to run the command that is necessary to build a container. And this again only works if Docker is running. So what we're going to do here is we're going to say Docker build dash T and then the name of the container, for example, um, I don't know, Iris, Iris dockerization or something like that. And then we're going to specify the dot to again, target this current directory for the build process. I'm running this and then the Docker container is being built. You can see here the building process is running. We will also see, uh, I think that it's going to install scikit-learn. There you go, run pip install scikit-learn. Uh, we also added main.py. You can see how all of this is happening. And then after a while it will be done and we will have the Docker container ready. So now we have this Docker container. It has this name, uh, Iris, what do we call it? Iris Dockerization. And we can now run this container as well by just saying Docker. And then we can say run. And if we want to use ports, if we have some networking stuff that is running, we need to map the ports as well. So if you don't have ports, if you're just running something, you don't need to specify anything network related, obviously. But if you have, in this case, a server listening on a certain port, you need to map that port to a port on your system. So you want to say dash P and the port 9999 shall be mapped to 9999. Otherwise, it won't work. Um, and then we also want to say, okay, what are we actually running? We're running the iris dockerization. And then this is running. You can also see here iris dockerization is running in the Docker desktop graphical user interface environment. And now even though nothing is running in PyCharm, even though I'm not running the actual script here in PyCharm, I will still be able to uh, just say telnet 127001. There you go. So I can still get this connection, even though um, it's only running in the Docker container. So you can see that this works. And I can also this is the most interesting thing. Now, I can delete this now. Um, what I can do here is I can also go to my command line and say pip uninstall scikit-learn. So this removes scikit-learn from my system. And you will see that this is the case because I will not be able to run this script anymore. I will not be able to run this because it says no module named sklearn. So I don't have it on my system. However, I can still go into the command line and execute this last command to run the iris dockerization. I can still open up my command line. I can still connect telnet 127001 for localhost. And you can see that I still get the data because in the container scikit-learn is present, even though it's not active on my system, even even though it's not present on my system, I can do everything because in the container, I have this reproducible environment, I don't need to worry about dependencies, I don't need to worry about installation, everything in the container is there. And I just have to run it and I can use it. That's the benefit of using Docker containers. All right, now let us move on to an additional example, we're going to containerize a fast API application. And this is oftentimes the sort of hello world example for beginners when it comes to dockerization and Python, if you Google how to containerize Python applications using Docker, you will oftentimes find examples using fast API. And because of that, I wanted to include such an example here as well. And for those of you who don't know fast API is a simple framework that allows us to easily build rest APIs, I have a video on it as well. And the basic idea is you specify a couple of functions, you map them to a certain endpoint, and then you have your rest API without having to use full blown uh, web frameworks like flask or Django fast API is, as the name already says, the best library to build a simple API fast. Um, and we're going to build such a simple API now with just a single endpoint, and we're going to containerize it using Docker. So in order to be able to work with fast API, we're going to use pip to install fast API and uvcorn, even though I'm not sure if uvcorn is not automatically installed using fast API or by installing fast, uh, fast API. Uh, but you need those two things. And then you're going to have to import uvcorn and also from fast API import fast API like this, then we're going to create a simple application by saying app equals fast API. And then we're going to provide just a single endpoint just to so that we have something and then we're going to containerize this whole application. And we're going to call the function here, main function, even though okay, this name is probably misleading, let's call it uh, central function or something, you can call it whatever you want. And we're going to just return a dictionary here that says neural is the key and 
nine is the value. So this is our JSON object. And in order to get this response, you will have to send a get request. So app dot get to the root endpoint. So just slash. That's the basic idea. And now in order to run this, what we do is we say if underscore underscore name equals underscore underscore main underscore underscore. If that is the case, we're just going to say uvicorn dot run. And we're going to run the app, we're going to specify the port 8000. And we're going to say that the host is again 0.0.0.0. And that is basically it. So this is our fast API, of course, you can make it more sophisticated, you can have multiple different endpoints with multiple different HTTP methods supported and those do some data science work or something. But this is the most basic example, which we're going to use here for the containerization, I can just run this now. And then you can see that this is running now on 0, 0, 0, 8000. I think I should be able to access it on localhost. There you go. And you can see I get neural and nine, that is our API now and we can containerize this API with Docker. So I'm going to close this now. And usually you have a structure that is not just a main file, you usually have something like a source folder. So you have SRC. And then this main file is inside of SRC, for example. Um, and then we're going to also have again, a Docker file. So we're going to ha uh, have a, a simple file Docker file with a capital D again. And in addition to that, this time, we're going to provide also a requirements txt file so that we have a file with all the modules needed. So we're going to create a new file here requirements.txt. And the basic idea is here, you just list all the modules, all the dependencies of your application, in this case, uvicorn and fast API. So just uvicorn and fast API. If you want to have a specific version, you can just say equals equals and the version number, but we're going to just specify the names now. And of course, if you're using pandas or scikit-learn or matplotlib or anything, you just put it into into the requirements. And then you have to install it, of course, with a certain command in the Docker file. Uh, but we're going to do this um, here. So again, we're going to start with a simple from Python 3.9. We're going to then say the working directory is going to be, let's call this, I don't know, neural dash API. And uh, this just specifies the working directory, the context of this whole thing. And we're going to then copy the requirements txt file into uh, the current directory. And we're going to also copy the source folder. In this case, there's only one file in the source folder. But in general, we're going to copy the whole source uh, source folder. And we're going to say, that we want to put it into another folder that has the same name. So we're getting this folder here, and we're putting it uh, into a new folder that has the same name. That's the basic idea here, we're using the copy command for this. And then we just say pip install dash r requirements txt, because this file is now added to the current directory, we can just use it in the pip command. And once this is done, we just have the same command. So we just specify again, Python, and then dot slash source src slash main dot py. And this is the Docker file that we need here. Now, what we can also do is we can, um, we can basically use the same build command now. But we can also specify a name. So I can go into the terminal here, I can navigate to the directory. And I can say again, Docker uh, built dash t neural dash API, for example, um, and then we're going to when we're running this, we can specify a name. So if you go to the Docker desktop here, you can see it just assigns a random name determined Diffy, or, or Diffy, Diffy, I think, uh, and then the actual container, but we can also specify such a name manually, we can just go ahead and say, uh, Docker, and then again, run, we're going to map 8000 to 8000. Again, since this is a, uh, an API running on a port, we need to map the port again, this port here. Um, and then we can just specify dash dash name. And we can say, I don't know, my container name. And then I can specify neural API. And I think I didn't forget anything. So that should work. There you go, you can see it's running. And here we can see my container name. So I can just use it from here. Now, I can go again to localhost, and you can see the API is running, even though it's not running on my system. So once again, I can go open up my command line, say pip uninstall, fast API. 
and then also pip uninstall ubicorn. There you go, it's gone. I can also stop the container now again. Hopefully, there you go, it's stopped. I can just run it here again from a desktop, so I don't have to always type in the command. But you can see the API is still running, even though I don't have fast API on my system, it is in the Docker container. And because of that, it works. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.